Hello dear followers and subscribers, I'm happy to uh, post a new video and this is actually not what you are used to. This is not actually uh, a technical video where I go through uh, a tip or a trick in a software and teach you how to use one of these cool mining packages or GIS tools. So this is going to be a Q&A session in which I will answer some of the questions that I get either here on YouTube or mainly on the Facebook page because here on YouTube uh, most of the people are going to comment about the video itself about the thing that they are watching either it is a geological modeling uh, video or a GIS uh, tip and trick so this is going to be like uh, the first questions that I've chosen because I've uh, a lot of people have asked me these questions they are mainly related to the career as a geologist or as a mining engineer so uh, they're you know related to each other so that's why I picked them but if you guys have any questions and you want to see them in the next Q&A whether they are technical questions or uh, other uh, questions that you have in mind make sure to comment uh, below so I'll pick the best one of them or uh, the one that uh, a lot of people are asking and try to use them for the next Q&A session and also let me know if you're interested in these kind of videos or you just want me to just keep on posting technical stuff so let's get into the first question so by the way I'm not actually uh, you know having a script or anything so I'm just going to be uh, reading these questions and think about them and answer them uh, in the same time so, uh, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I'll try to make it as short as possible. So, the first question that I get a lot is, especially uh, from companies, so it is, what is the mining, I mean, the best mining software? Well, the answer to that is not really easy, because uh, it really depends. It really depends, because if we talk about a mining software, we're talking about a full mining process okay so it means that because you know mining uh, it's not some people think that mining is just designing a, 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 a pit or uh, maybe doing some scheduling but before that there are a lot of steps that are involved to get that that pit because after all a pit design is not just like a 3d pit that you can view uh, inside the software because we're not using you know uh, softwares that uh, that just you know to sell you know a picture or whatever so we 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 need other things that uh, you know to be good at the same time uh, with the picture so for example uh, the pit needs to be economic so uh, in order to get the best uh, economic pit you need to get, to have a good optimizer and to get it, you know, the best optimization and to get the best bit shell, you need to have uh, some good block modeling uh, tools. And in, your, in order to use the, uh, to have a, you know, a block model that represents the best uh, your deposit, you need to have the best uh, geological uh, tools that allow you to get, you know, uh, the domains and to represent these geological formation and, and layers. Uh, the best way uh, possible so so it, it's it's actually a full process and what I mean with this is that some softwares might be for example good at geological modeling and not good at other uh, stuff like pit design or whatever and some other softwares might be good at the uh, pit design and not good at other you know like geological modeling uh, you know uh, process so that's why some companies tend to use multiple softwares so for example they they might use leapfrog for uh, geological modeling because uh, they you know leapfrog got some really powerful implicit modeling tools that really make uh, geological modeling uh, you know fast and easy and, and very uh, effective and they might go to like uh, maybe uh, micromine 
to do uh, you know um, other things like probably some geostatistics some block modeling and uh, they might also use uh, Whittle from uh, Juvia to do uh, the uh, pit optimization and they might go to a different software like for scheduling or uh, design so it really depends on uh, what are you actually going to do so that's not you know an exact answer so you can't actually say that Serpac is the best or Micromine is the best so but if you compare them in, uh, on certain modules so for example if you compare Serpac with Micromine uh, in you know uh, for a geological modeling for example I would say that Micromine is better because until now Serpac they have only you no know, explicit modeling which is like a tedious process and uh, it may take a lot of time to make a geological model and if you need to update that you don't you need to do the whole thing again all over again while Micromine they got both explicit and implicit modeling tools so you can see but Serpac for example might be good when we go to like uh, probably block modeling geostatistics or whatever so you know it's it's it depends on the perspective so or the project itself so that's my personal again my personal answer to uh, this uh, question so if you guys have a different uh, idea or you think um, you want to compare these or you have uh, anything if you have an experience with any of these softwares or others make sure to uh, comment that below I would love to hear your uh, you know opinion about this uh, topic so the next question is how to get started as a young a young geologist or a mining engineer so I know that getting a job in the mining industry or as a geologist in general is uh, some people think that this is like a tough thing so uh, because you know that you have this this paradox that they will hire you only if you have experience and you will have experience only if you you work with uh, some companies and uh, this paradox actually doesn't only exist in the mining industry but it's actually everywhere so so the starting point is the experience you need to prove to the uh, the company that's going to hire you that you have experience but let's define experience experience doesn't mean because for some people that you think that uh, experience is you need to work on you know some gold deposits with you know uh, uh, you know uh, in a Canadian mine or in Australian mine or whatever and list that in your uh, resume in order to get hired or noticed by you know uh, these companies but that's not true because experience is actually anything that you can do so and nowadays I think it's getting easier and easier because some of the jobs of a geologist or a mining engineer uh, actually requires you to know like a certain software and uh, to manipulate that software or to have like a certain knowledge like uh, I don't know you're familiar with the resource classification like Jork for example and uh, you know to uh, have some basic stuff to know for example maybe QGIS you know for mapping and things like that these things are actually available online and you can learn uh, the these kind of things online and list them in your uh, resume and uh, you know list that you can do this uh, thing and that thing that you can do mapping uh, you can create, uh, I don't know, that you're familiar probably with some programming language like Python. Maybe you've automated something uh, inside that programming language and you can list that as, as something that you know or, you know, to attract attention. And uh, this is a way of building experience. And uh, another way of doing it is try to get internship. So you go to a company and you just uh, tell them that you want to work work for free just you know work for uh, building that experience they give you a task to do do it for free just to learn uh, don't think about money in the beginning then all the tasks that they gave you to do 
you can list them in your resume. So if let's say you get an internship for like a couple of months, like let's say six months or, or whatever, you get the chance to work on like a, a couple of projects or do a couple of tasks that you can list them in your resume. Then with your own things that you've learned them during your, uh, you know, uh, college or uh, things that you've learned them online, like uh, on websites like Udemy or maybe on GeoTrainings, my website. And you can list these kind of things that you've learned. And I think that your chances uh, are going to be uh, better. And there's here is one trick. So try not to copy everyone else. So if everyone else is, you know, know like maybe a little bit of uh, structural geology and they know a little bit of, you know, uh, how to use ArcGIS, for example, try to be different. Uh, search for alternative, you know, uh, softwares, for example, if everyone is learning ArcGIS, try to learn learn ArcGIS and QGIS. If, if they're, you know, now know how to use, for example, Micromine, try to learn Micromine and Serpac. So try to have something additional so that you stand out from the crowd and you will be noticeable and uh, the, 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 the guy or the company that's going to hire you, they will think that you're different and you have something to add. So that's why they will pick you. Also, uh, when you're sending your uh, resume, if you know that there's something else that you know and uh, it might be you know, uh, interesting, try to mention that in your cover letter and tell them that other than these kind of things, I also know that this one thing that might not be related to my job, but it is something that I think it might be useful for you guys. Maybe you're good at marketing, for example, and uh, I don't know, they might find that really useful or interesting. Maybe they they wanna uh, like uh, they want you. They think if you're good at marketing, maybe you can uh, negotiate things with uh, with you know with clients, and they might hire you for that. So try to you know think out of the box and uh, you will be able to land a job. So that's my answer to this uh, question. So let's move to the next one. How to get your first job as a mining engineer or geologist. So this is maybe uh, or almost the same question on how to get started. But now let's say that you have the experience uh, you have some internships that you can list in your resume and you need to have that one thing that what I mentioned is to stand out from the crowd. Where can you actually, you know, starting, uh, you know, where you can start search for like uh, potential companies or to get, uh, you know, jobs. So the best place is actually LinkedIn. So don't try to contact, you know, companies on Facebook, their Facebook page or, you know, social, uh, other social network like uh, Twitter or whatever or YouTube. So because LinkedIn is actually uh, for professionals. And also, if you have a LinkedIn profile, uh, keep that cat and dog, you know, videos, that viral videos, keep them on your Facebook. Don't share these kind of things on LinkedIn. OK, try to be as professional as possible. If you've done something, let's say uh, you've learned how to use QGIS and you've done like a cool map or, or maybe you have uh, a trick that you've learned uh, probably from a free YouTube video. So you can go and repeat that. I'll probably share that as a, you know, a small article and uh, show people what you can actually do. And uh, before doing that, there's a step which is trying to grow your network. OK. Try to follow the companies that you want to work for, okay? And then enter the uh, employee of these companies, you know, enter this company, you'll find the employees of these companies. Try to, you know, connect to uh, every single one of them. <clears throat> Don't be spammy, but connect to the important people, maybe the CEO or whatever, and try to grow your network. And then the next step is to be active. and. People actually misunderstood what active on LinkedIn means. It doesn't mean like sharing uh, cat and uh, dogs videos on LinkedIn. It means being active, try to be productive, like uh, create something, something unique and share it on LinkedIn. 
people are going to start on uh, and comment on these maybe they have questions maybe they like the map that you've shared or the model that you've created and when someone is going to like that post uh, his or her network are going to see your post so there might be people who are actually uh, interested in that and they might you know uh, connect with you on LinkedIn or like that and this is gonna go viral if you have like a good content and try to make something unique try to came up with the best that you have and uh, keep it at that level so don't share like a good map now and then probably uh, after a couple of days because you want to just post as much as possible and be spammy you will you know sometimes it's gonna be good sometimes it's gonna be bad so don't do that just post the high level things the things that you're proud of and you think that's the best that you can do and these kind of techniques actually uh, they're not only for uh, geologists or mining engineers it could be for anyone so this is the right way to do that then with your network and with what you post uh, you have two things that will happen the, f the first thing is that you're gonna keep on growing your network because you're posting more and people are gonna start to notice you and there will be a day in which you share that uh, one thing uh, that or keep on sharing these kind of things and someone is gonna be interested in that and they're going to reach out to you and tell you that hey uh, Mr. X uh, we've seen a lot of your posts and you look like you know what you're doing in that specific topic and we have this position and we think that you are the right fit for this one so that's that's the way to do it and even if they uh, no one is going to approach you or no one is going to notice what you're doing if you go and for example the you can see that a lot of companies are actually posting uh, their uh, you know their their job vacancies in, inside their LinkedIn uh, profile if you apply for one of these the people that are going to hire you, the first thing they're going to do, they're going to take a look at your profile, at your LinkedIn profile. And they will notice, the first thing they will notice, what is your experience, what you've done, and then you will notice what are you posting. And they're going to keep on scrolling and they will notice that you are uh, doing exactly what they want. So you're good at that specific software and you talk about some uh, specific, you know, uh, tips and tricks that only experts in that specific field know it and they might consider hiring you uh, for that you know for these posts and not your resume actually so that's why LinkedIn it is really important and it is a good starting point at least for a starter because you know if someone have like 10 years of experience I don't think that's gonna be an issue to get a new uh, job so that's my answer to this uh, question which is the last question for uh, today I hope this was not really long and it was you know uh, informative for some people and uh, if you guys like these kind of videos and you want me to post more Q&A make sure to uh, comment your questions below whether they are technical questions or related to career or anything you want and I'll try to include these questions in my next uh, Q&A. And until then, uh, take a look at our uh, trainings in geotrainings.com and uh, check out my Facebook page and follow me there for uh, more informative stuff related to the mining industry and geology in general. And see you in the next time.